Hey guys, it's Poe back again with Let's Get Techy. Today I am doing a public service announcement for all of you. Um, today the Radeon RX 6800 XT uh, board partner cards launched. Um, I think launch is probably a laughable word for what happened this morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, but nevertheless, um, I stopped what I was doing. I was working on building a new computer. Uh, it's the one that I had alluded to in the last video because uh, I wanted to make this video really quick. I wasn't expecting to make this video, but after I saw what I saw this morning, um, I knew that I had to do this. So AMD's new RDNA 2 architecture has done fantastic. Uh, they've really taken the fight to NVIDIA with this architecture, uh, and they're finally competing in the high end again, which is fantastic. Um, that's a win for everyone, whether you like NVIDIA or AMD. Um, the ultimate goal with competition and having AMD compete in the high end again is uh, to hopefully bring down prices overall. When there's competition, uh, prices should come down. Now we have an external factor, unfortunately, of a worldwide pandemic that is throwing a wrench in that. Uh, but nevertheless, when I saw the prices of all of these sold out Board Partner 6800 XT cards this morning, um, I just I knew that I had to make this video. I wanted to get this out. No one should buy a Board Partner 6800 XT. They are vastly overpriced. It's almost laughable that I'm giving you this advice because you probably aren't going to be able to buy one anyway. Um, but I don't want someone to spend their hard-earned money incorrectly uh, or waste it. Don't get me wrong, the cards will perform great, but when you look at the reference edition or the competition from NVIDIA, the average price of somewhere around $820 uh, for a uh, board partner 6800 XT is absolutely ludicrous. The 6800 XT and NVIDIA's RTX 3080 uh, compete very closely with one another. Uh, it really comes down to what games you play. There are certain games where NVIDIA pulls ahead uh, quite significantly and then there's also certain games where AMD pulls ahead. I think some of those games, like the new Dirt game that AMD is far out ahead in, um, I think those will probably start to pull back even once NVIDIA starts to optimize for that title. Um, so I feel like that data is a little bit skewed. Um, but regardless, uh, there's still very close competition. Um, so that's why I don't feel like the average price of a board partner 6800 XT being um, what $150 to $170 more than reference uh, makes any sense in any universe. Um, I'm not an NVIDIA fanboy or an AMD fanboy. Um, I want whatever's going to give me the best performance for the best price um, and what price makes the most sense. I would still recommend a 6800 XT at the reference price of 649. Uh, that's still a, a great price that really competes with Nvidia um, and I think it's probably the correct price for the performance that the card has and where it lands against the RTX 3080. Uh, but when you look at the fact that the board partner 6800 XTs are basically across the board more expensive than RTX 3080 cards um, and the fact that the 3080 does slightly eke out a win against that card um, and also absolutely demolishes it in ray tracing uh, I don't think it makes sense at all to buy one of the more expensive board partner 6800 XTs um, I would rather wait and buy a reference 6800 XT or buy one of the RTX 3080s around $699 to $750. I know they are still decently hard to come by, but they can be had for those prices, at least here in the United States. Um, and I would much rather spend, let's say, a theoretical $760 before tax on an RTX 3080 versus 
$820 to $850 before tax for a 6800 XT. Uh, that's going to get you slightly less performance. Again, still very close, but slightly less performance depending on the game and drastically lower uh, ray tracing performance in game. The last point that I wanted to bring up in this video was the price of uh, custom board partner Radeon 6800 non-XT cards. Uh, so there are a few of those on Newegg as well, obviously also sold out. Uh, but the prices on those are actually more expensive than a reference 6800 XT. Um, I think I saw one around 670 or 680, uh, so just under $700. Uh, but again, that's for the non-XT model, and there is a significant difference in performance between the non-XT and the XT. Uh, so I think the probably the more important takeaway from this video is to not buy uh, custom board partner 6800 non-XT cards. Um, that is, I think it's pathetic that those custom 6800 non-XT cards are actually priced higher than a reference 6800 XT and it just makes me feel sorry for anyone that's not educated about this and doesn't understand how much performance they're giving away while also paying more for that card. The, the regular everyday person that's just looking to build a gaming PC and doesn't follow this stuff on a daily basis isn't going to realize uh, what they're giving away and, and the fact that they're paying more for significantly less performance. Uh, and that's, that's sad to me. I, I don't want to see anyone waste their money or throw away performance. Um, so again, if you can get the 6800 XT reference model, buy that. Uh, if you can't, go to NVIDIA and their Ampere technology. Um, do not buy a custom board RX 6800 XT for $800. There's one out there for $900. Um, to be fair, that is an, an AIO liquid cooled version and it is really nice. Again, at $900 though, that's drastically overpriced for the performance. Um, do not buy a custom board 6800 XT. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this one. Um, a nice cheery video for you all on Thanksgiving. Um, a bit of a rant, and I do apologize for that, but I just I had to get this out there. Um, if I can keep one person from wasting their money, um, then it's absolutely worth the time that I've spent recording and editing this video this morning. Um, I know I've said it a million times, do not buy Board Partner 6800 or 6800 XT cards. I'll see you guys in the next one.